All right, so with this channel reboot, I want to explore stuff on the Harley again. I want to go out, do things. And one big thing that happens with these big V twin Harleys is that damn ticking noise at the top end. It's like, what the hell is going on? Well, it's actually a really simple fix, and uh, this $10 little part will take care of what that ticking is. So, what it is, is these are Rocket Lockers, is a name brand, but what they do is they lock in the set pin for the rocker valve. So let's go ahead and get the gas tank off and get the top end off to expose what I am talking about. First thing we gotta do is get this bike on that jack. All right, I'm not gonna lie, that took a little longer than I thought it was. It's not off to a good start with the project, but here we are. Got the bike all ratchet strapped down, so it won't or shouldn't go anywhere. So we're back. We're working on the bike again. This is now the next day. Uh, as you can tell, my lighting is a little bit different because I currently have the garage door shut because I have my little shop dog with me. That's Lily, and uh, if that door is open, she will be gone. All right, so. Let's get a sound clip of the bike right now and see if we can hear the ticking of the engine. Hopefully this camera will pick it up. Whew. That's, uh, that's a little sketchy starting out on the... Uh the old stand there, but you know what? Hey, it happened. Let's do it. Let's pull it off these plug wires is pretty easy. All you gotta do is just pull them up. They click right off. And then make a little plunk noise. Gonna need a 5 8 inch deep socket. Get on top of the plug. Make sure it's all loose in. And they spin right out. Really nothing to it, so let's go ahead and get the other one. Here's the other one. Again, not too bad. Got a little rust on the surface, but that's because the bike sat out so for about a year. But all in all, not too bad. But I'm definitely putting new plugs in it. So now we gotta get this seat off, and it's pretty simple. It's actually really simple. Um, since I do have the touring version, the uh, strap has to come completely off, and all you need is just a Phillips head screwdriver here on the side. Screws right out, just like that. Strap comes loose. Go free. Next to do is the backrest, which this is aftermarket. This one's simple. You just pinch together and pull it out and then release. Again, not hard. Take the seat. There is a screw on the back side, but since I've replaced the battery on this twice and done some extra lights on it, I lost the screw. So therefore just pull forward and it comes right off. And just like that, the seat is off. Now you got access to stuff underneath like the ECU, the battery, my extra wiring harness for the lights on the tail. Alright, next thing I want to do, I'm going to get this cover off. Uh, it's pretty simple, they pull right out, but you got to uh, take the bag off first. Now to pull this off, just as easy, just, there's a little tab on the, not even a tab, a little handle on the bottom, and off it comes. And now you got access to the very dirty fuse cover. And if you look underneath, yeah, scratched it. If you look underneath it, you got this 50 amp fuse right here. All you do, pull it out. Now the bike is dead. We go ahead and start removing the tank. So next we gotta move this chrome piece. Uh, all it requires is a 3 8 bolt down here and number four standard up here. So you got two wires or two harnesses, one vent line, two vent line right here. So this vent line is a pain in the ass to snake down. So pull it off right there. This harness, push and pull. 
This one was push and pull. Now this vent line, I'm gonna disconnect up here, bend this little tab out, and got it out. So now it's all disconnected and the tank is ready to be pulled out. Tank line or this gas line removed from the tank. So I'm just gonna put a rack here because some gas is gonna spill out. These are quick release, so they're not that hard to uh, just push up on it. Some old finagling. Get the gas out. So, just like that, the tank is disconnected gas wise. All right, next thing we gotta do, we gotta move four T40 screws. So, we got two here and we got two on the sides. So, let's go ahead and get these loosened up first. These loose. The answer is yes, yes, we can. Let's do it this one. Let's go down to the side. So the sides are not tricky. You just take this little rubber cover off, put it to the side. Same size screw, T40. Let's put this here. And then punch the fairing, okay. Okay, let's go ahead and get the other side done and let's pull the tank. Let's get these last two bottom bolts removed. All right, we got the tank all loose. I'm gonna pull it up and I already have preset my Home Depot trash bag tank holder on a workbench device. All right. It also helps to have not that a lot of gas in the tank, which I do not. I have about a little less than a quarter tank. Voila, no more gas tank. Let's hit the road. Now we gotta do stuff. All right, here comes the fun part. Next thing we gotta do, is this is just for the touring models if you have this little fairing here you gotta go ahead and pull that off there's just two bolts under there you have a harbor freight motorcycle stand like i do you gotta take the handle out of the way now if i was smart i would put it on the other side but i did it ha all right all right i got my 11 millimeter wrench good thing it was the last wrench that i picked up because god forbid it'd be one of like the first one or hell i even picked the second one Why does the hardest bolt always have to be the one that gives you the most struggle? Maybe it's that last bolt mentality, you know, the hardest one to take off is always the last one. Alright, we got that fairing out of the way, or heat shield. Next, let's take off the rocker covers. What I do, pull off the rocker covers. It's uh, six bolts of 11 millimeter, and uh, I should uh, expose the top of the heads or the rockers. The whole reason why we're doing this. Now there is a torque spec on these and I don't know what it is. Less than that. Let's go ahead and get these all pulled off. And go from there. I lied to you guys. That side, a hell of a lot easier. Got the ratchet on there, just got her done. This side, not so much. Got to do it the old fashioned way. Just one little bolt at a time. One little turn at a time. Alright, I'll check in with you guys when this is all pulled. So we got this side out. Luckily these bolts weren't as big. They're a little bit smaller. And I had ratcheting one of these. And it made my life a little bit easier. But let's go ahead and go to the other side and get the head or the rocker cover. Start this back one. Okay, that was um incredibly easy. Again, not surprised. Let's uh... Let's do the first one, or the front one. Let's, all, let's, do, let's do this in one take. Here we go. Woohoo! Rocker covers removed. Gaskets. All right. All right, so let me explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. So here's your rocker, right? This is on the valves and it goes like this and open, close, and bang stuff happens. Here's your rocker riding pin. Now I'm not gonna use technical terms because I don't know them. I just know I gotta do this. So this has a half shape moon in it which this pin sits through and holds it. Well, the tolerance between this pin and that bolt are pretty big and it makes a clicking noise and that's what you're hearing. So the sleeve is actually gonna go in the rocker holder assembly itself and not allow this pin to twist as much and slam against this bolt as it's running. First thing we gotta do, 
we got to unload this. So the reason we took the spark plugs out was to spin the tires so we could get this piston down at the bottom with no load on it. So therefore we go ahead and pull these two pins and insert this. All right, so we got the back cylinder at bottom because you can tell because the rockers move back and forth freely. The front ones do not. They're a little tight. So we're gonna start from back to front. So let's get this first one undone. Bolt looks pretty good, but if you look closely, let me wipe it down real quick. If you look closely, you see the little markings on it right here? That's what I'm talking about, The that this pin is just kind of slapping against it. So that, what the sleeve will do, will prevent this from slapping against it. Since I'm doing mine on the bike, I won't need this tool, but what this tool does is make sure that your pin, rocker pin is aligned. But since mine's on the bike, I haven't touched it, it hasn't moved, I'm gonna go ahead and not need it. Now you could do this one of two ways and I'm going to just screw it down with this bolt and seat it in so let's see what happens before I install it I'll show you what it's supposed to do one side's tapered so this side's a little bit smaller you put it on like this and that's all it's doing it's just minimizing that gap for the rocker pivot arm to slap against Hopefully I don't screw things up too bad. I might. It's a very possibility. You know, like just trying to loosen it just now. And we're going to monitor it and see how well this little sleeve goes in. Right now, next to no resistance. Just like that, the sleeve is done. All right, working on the last bolt now. Should go in. Look at that, nice and easy. Nice and easy. Tighten that back down. I'm gonna have the There we go. So we officially finished putting in all the sleeves. They're in all four on this side. These two, this one gave me a little bit of problem. There's a, I guess a little bit of burring on this seam. You can tell it's put together like that. There's a little issue there, but a little bit of wiggling went right through. No issues and no issues. So since you know how to take it apart, we're gonna montage this and put it back together. Cue the montage. All right, it's all back together. Here's the moment of truth. That's a good sign. It's not a neutral. Let's see if we get it neutral. Here we go. All right. We forgot to do something. We forgot to hook up the gas.
I'd help to put this on every now and then. There we go. That's uh, that should that should help. It should. I'm, I'm not not hundred percent sure. I don't know if gas is required in engines to run, but let's find out. much quieter in person. The ticking has gone down significantly. I also have my garage door closed, so probably should open that. But hey, that was a good $10 purchase, I tell you what. But if you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button. Stay tuned, I got a couple more stuff coming your way. It's right in there in those three boxes. But I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy.